Welcome back. Today we'll discuss relational algebra and how it relates to relational database. Database management system must have a query language, right, that help users access data store and database. Relational algebra is a procedural query language where we users tell the system to carry out a set of operation. Relational algebra is a family of algebras with a well-founded semantics used for modeling. Let's review some concepts and terminology related to database. Do you remember we have relation, which is our table. We have attributes. These are our columns. And we have tuples. These are our records. Several relational algebra operators we look at projection, selection, rename, cross product, union, intersect, and natural join. But first, let's create a table, or let's create database that we can work with. Remember to start your MOMP server. And next, you'll need to create first a database. To do that, we can click on our plus sign to create new connection. And for example, I created new connection for this semester, 532. So when you create your connection, create a new query. And the first thing you need to do is create database. Then you'll need to create several tables. One table, member, define details about members. The second table is book with the book IDs, name and authors, and the third one is borrow. So we'll be looking at relationship between members, borrowing entity, and the books. These are create table statements. Note from last week, we talked about primary key. Just remember to define primary key. Now in this table, borrow, you have something interesting. You have references. So these are your foreign key that you can define in MySQL Workbench. And these references point to specific relation table. So the member ID in table borrow, here's our member ID. Where does it point to member ID from the table from relation member? And remember constraint on foreign keys? They can be null or they have to point to existing member IDs. We need to set up our foreign keys with table editor, or we can use ER diagram. To create diagram, remember to go to reverse engineer, right? Select your connection. And in connection, you will select your existing database that you created. In this case, I have created relational algebra, I'm not interested in other databases I created earlier, all right? So when you've done that, you should be able to see your diagram, but your diagram will not have any connection yet. So our goal to create those references, those foreign keys. So the first step for you is to select, or first identify which table in fact need foreign key. So the borrow table or the borrow relation has foreign key references to members and to books. So let's start by using table editor and select foreign key. So we have two foreign keys, member ID and book ID. So select member ID first and what is the reference table? In this case, member, right? It reference to the member relation. And the second one is book ID and it reference to book relation, all right? And finally, select those keys as you see in this right panel. And note you have many, one to many relationships. Okay, so now we can create, now we can actually populate our tables and just follow the provided script. So we're just adding records we're inserting records into table members, inserting records in the table book, and inserting records 
into table borrow. You can use one of the execution symbols on the top left. All right, so now we're ready. The first relational algebra component will talk about projection. It is when we select required column of data from relation. And what's interesting about projection, it removes duplicated data. So from this relational algebra expression, our SQL database execute the following query. So we're selecting distinct member and distinct is very important in this case because we actually removing duplicated data. All right. So our second query is as example, distinct member ID, book ID from table borrow and the output is in this case, two columns, right? Member ID and book ID. In the first case, we were selecting just one column. Our second relational algebra component selection. So we're selecting required tuples of data from our relation. And we can also specify some conditions. So in this case, the condition would be certain date of birth for table member. Note this asterisk. I mean, select all columns, select all attributes, and we're placing where condition after the table selection. All right, next is rename. When we altering the attribute name, sometimes it's, it just provides us user-friendly names for attributes instead of abbreviation. We could also remove confusion. Some tables may have the same name, for, for instance, for the attributes. So we're using as to provide alias for attribute name. So in this case, I wanted to create alias to name and name it as a first name. Cross product is our next component. We're combining data from two different relations into just one relation. And look at this table, for instance. So we combine two tables, member and borrow. Our table one or A with a certain number of tuples, records, right? Let's say N. And the second table had, let's say, M tuples. So in total, as a result, we have N multiply by M size. Member relation had five tuples and borrow relationship had five tuples. So a result, 25. So we end up having a table with 25 records. And the way to do it, we just select all attributes from both tables, member and borrow. Union. With union, remember the set theory, right? In union, we're combining all rows from two tables. So we have one set, second set, and really we're combining both sets together. It's our union. One requirement for union is to have relation with identical attributes. For instance, our query. I would like to find book IDs for books borrowed by both Charlie and Mike. So as a result, we end up with three records, but the most important is those two tables have the same uh, identical attributes. All right, natural join is different from union. In the next sli slide, we'll talk about difference between join and union in general. So natural join is between two or more relationships. So it's not necessary just between two tables. It could be two or more relations. And it will be combination of tuples where they have equal values for common attributes. For instance, we're selecting all attributes from member and doing the natural join with the table borrow. So the member ID is a common attribute between these two tables. However, some other attributes are combined, they're different. So if you look at the size, if you look at this table, well now we have six attributes. So to summarize the difference between union and join, union combine results, let's say uh, vertically, 
right? So these two tables, let's say A1, B2, C3, etc., they all combine vertically. The attributes must be the same. In join, join appends relation or output horizontally in this case. So the best way to remember would be think of union as combination of results vertical and um, long table, right? And join will be horizontal or wide table. All right. How about intersect? Remember previously we talked about union where both sets were combined. So in this case, we're talking about intersect, just the data that appears between the chair between two sets. How about this query? Member IDs of the members who have borrowed both the book's fences and inheritance, right? There are probably not that many members, so we need to find, and indeed, in this case, just one member. And this is the common representation for intersect. And remember what was the union, right? It's very easy to remember U for union. So for the query, uh, here's our query. So we select ID, member ID from borrow. And we're joining borrow with relation book using their ID. So the book ID from book relation should be equal to book ID from borrow relation. So this is our join or requirement. And we're also looking for a name to be in a set of two elements, fences and inheritance. And we just group the result by member ID. So good. We cover quite few relational algebra operators. And just to refresh our learning, so we have union, right? We have intersect. We're also selecting and projecting. So project works column-wise or attribute-wise. Selecting worked as um, per tuple. We also had a product when we're combining two tables and we had natural join, which um, has condition that condition for matching attributes, let's say. So, so here's our query that you can follow alone, where you create um, selecting, for example, distinct member from borrow. Remember projection example. And here's the output, etc. You can try all those queries. And finally, you may be curious, why would you need to study relational algebra, right? And not just learn how to query. Well, there's some job descriptions actually for data science analysts that would require you some knowledge or understanding visual relational algebra models. See you soon.